right, hello, hello, we are back. Uh, I have now identified the error. Uh, our error is that mushrooms can't be rotated. Uh, this was not indicated on the wiki page, uh, which is not uncommon for these objects, but I'm actually sort of glad that we did come across this error. Uh, so for instance, the Twisted Way object, the Bowser's Castle wa Wavy Road, uh, that has to be set at 000 in your course model. Um, otherwise it will not work. Um, and actually this is the version where I, where I did not fix this. But I, in the KMP, well, there, there are two errors uh, that, that we had. So the, the first error that we had is that uh, obviously these were rotated in the X direction. Um, but the I uh, and the you know the object wasn't meant for that, so it doesn't support that. Um, but then the other issue we had with this the scale, so the mushrooms would appear in game as um, scale one, but their collision was scale two. Um, and so the way you get around that is you have to actually go um, if you look at. Uh, the actual um, files itself, you can see that there's a kanoko.brs. If you go in here, you can uh, I 3D models, and then for each one of these, you want to go to the bones, and then this is where you can change the scale of the actual object itself. Um, this is when you scale something, and the collision and course model don't you know match up. Sometimes you need to scale just the uh, BRES file, and the bones is how you do that. Um, but in our case, uh, we're just going to go with a series of um, scale one and non-rotated mushrooms. Uh, yeah. Every every mistake is a is a learning opportunity or so, or something, uh, but yeah, basically our documentation for objects is not the best, so we're just going to work around our limitations. Um, one other way you could do this if you wanted to is you could say let's place down these objects, but then what I'm going to do in my blend, I'm actually going to take the uh, so I'm going to go into this bres, I'm going to open it. I'm going to go to this DAE, or one of them, and uh, I'm sure that looks good. And then I can right click, export, export as I uh, export as DAE, and then uh, save. And then when you go in here, Blender, file, import uh, DAE, and I uh, let's see, we want this one. You can import that, and now you can see this is the actual mushroom that the game reads in. So you can uh, uh, position this where you want to. You know, this is with the correct scaling as well. Um, and so you can position it, and then N to bring up the side panel, and you can see uh, item. This is its... Uh, Ah, I see. So the, the reason why I, this location is not showing up is because we need to actually click on this armature. So right now we're moving the mesh around. The mesh is actually different than the armature itself. Um, and this can be kind of confusing um, because if I was to delete this mesh, I still have this armature here and it's still right there. So we, we don't want to do that. You want to actually go up here and delete the armature. Um, so this is like if you have a character and you want to um, rig it, so you know, and be able to animate it, have the arms twist and whatever. Uh, you do that using an armature, and the mesh is actually attached to these series of bones, is what they're called. And so, uh, in our case, it doesn't really matter um, because we're not going to be using that. But uh, Alt P is the uh, clear parent, is how to get rid of the. Um, is to keep the mesh in the same place while clearing the parent. Sometimes that can be useful. Anyways, um, in our case, uh, we're not going to use it, but just to show you, um, let's say you want to place the object here. You n note these XYZ locations, you write them down. I uh, Actually, you can also uh, position from... Uh, 
yeah, so what, what you can do is you can, uh, th there's this KMP uh, Blender plugin created by Gabriella, and uh, this allows you to um, yeah, create objects and then paste them into KMP Cloud. I'll link that below. But uh, you can also do it the old fashioned way and take this XYZ coordinates, and then you have to flip around some of those and you have to multiply some by negative 100 or something. Um, I'll link Eman Rezu's tutorial on placing objects. Um, but basically, you can uh, not include these in the course model, have them as KMP objects. You know, place them in this exact same location, but then also have this mesh in the KCL, uh, the course KCL, and so that way the it will match up. Um, but we're not going to do that here because that's a lot of work. And uh, so you can see, yeah, we delete the armature, but we still have the object here. Um, in this case, we can just delete it nicely. Sometimes it's not as nice. Um, yeah. I. So that was that was our issue. Now you might be wondering, well, this is this is a big skip ahead, and you would be right. Uh, first, let me go into full screen um, and move this down. I so I recorded an hour without actually making sure I was recording, and so I just wasted an hour talking to no one. So uh, second time through is going to be better. That's that's the goal. So this is what we're gonna what we're gonna do by the end of this maybe forty five minutes. See if I can trim it down. And so let's let's just delete all this all this stuff and uh, circle select C to circle select. You can do this in object mode as well. Um, delete these objects. Uh, select these as well. And we can also uh, go into face select mode. Select all these. Uh, control to deselect. Uh, shift selecting these and X to delete. Um, you can also like control shift click. Nah, that didn't do anything. Wasn't expecting anything. Um, uh, nope. Oh, nope. Nope. <laughs> X faces. There we go. So now we're back to now we're back to what we had before. Actually, I did scale all of this up. So one thing that I'll that I'll note here, A to select everything, uh, you can see this, uh, sorry, this is currently where we're scaling it from. You can scale it from the 3D cursor. So if I shift right click to move this middle mouse or this uh, cursor, you can see that's you know now where it scales from. You can also scale from individual origins, which scales from each object's individual origin, unsurprisingly. <coughs> but uh, we're gonna do bounding box center and I scaled it up by about 0.5, so you can do S 1.5. Just actually type it in, and you can see up top left, this is um, where it's, um, yeah, those values there, and you can type in stuff directly. You can type in formulae, so you can type 1.5 times, uh, times 3. Not that you'd want to, but you can do that. Um, but in our case, this, this is fine. This is also why you create a uh, test KCL as well. Um, you know, when you're creating a test track, don't make your KCL very polished because you're gonna have to overwrite a lot of that information. Anyways, you know, just remake your KCL, remake your course model, etc. So uh, I scale up by like 1.5 times and we're gonna see how this, see how this turns out. I, I think, um, yeah, let's just get started. So, one thing that we're gonna do is we're going to top view, then we're gonna go into vertex mode and control select uh, to pick shortest path. And then we'd like to just fill this. And so you can press F to fill. Um, the What it's not going to like is there's elevation changes here. And what's behind the scenes, Mario Kart Wii is gonna triangulate anything, everything anyways. But right now, it, it this is a giant N-gon. Um, and it doesn't know how to triangulate this. So it's gonna make a guess, but you're probably gonna get like a line going from here to all the way over here. And when you drive across this, it's gonna be really bumpy. So we don't want that. Uh, one option that you can do uh, is go into face and then grid fill. In our case, it's not gonna work because as you can see, select two edge loops or a single closed edge loop from which two edge loops can be calculated. Um, this is not gonna work in our case, although it uh, definitely can work. Uh, this, uh, if you go edge, offset edges extrude, 
or the shortcut for that E, control E, so E to extrude, control E to bring up this extrude menu, and then you can extrude, and uh, it just follows your geometry, and if you bring it, that out more, you can see this is, this is something what we end up looking. This is our result that we end up with. Um, yeah, that's, so control E, this is how you create um, off-road. <coughs> it's just control E and uh, mess around with these and then you're like okay well now i'm getting some weird artifacts so how do i fix this well you select these and merge at center boom and uh o to per turn off proportional editing right i uh, and then uh, you can also like i'd like to select all these like oh it didn't select i know there's one behind here but i can't select it how do i do that that is alt z alt z is x-ray mode so now you can see you know if you want to grab mesh behind other mesh alt z allows you to do that really easily whereas if you just have here and you try to select everything you might not get this this in particular right um but or in our case i like to select behind here and so alt z is um yeah what you want to do merge at center um and let's bring this out here uh and uh, uh we also want to maybe merge these a center and I, yeah, actually, now that I'm looking at this more, I'm not liking, not liking the direction this is taking. So I'm going to maybe merge these, merge at center, and select these, merge at center. And then I'm going to smooth this out here, and I'm going to merge at last. M to merge, right? And so now you can see this is a lot uh neater over here of a transition. Um, we obviously still have a sharp edge here and you can always go proportional editing, O to bring on proportional editing and then uh, increase the you know radius of your, your thing. But we now have off-road connecting here and we're gonna you know keep filling this in. So here grid fill might work. So if I alt click, I can select an entire edge loop. D this depends on your edit preferences your input I have emulate numpad on um, but sometimes like it might be shift alt click or whatever um, so if I now try to do grid fill let's see if this will work I don't know if this will work um, sorry face grid fill and now it doesn't like it so we're just gonna control E keep doing what we've been doing and uh, yeah and we're gonna alt Z and we're gonna M merge at center. I uh, sure we can do some proportional editing. Doesn't really matter. Merge at center. Let's turn it off. Um, and let's take all these and merge at center. And just trying to keep this circular so we don't have any super harsh edges. Um, and I'll click again to select the edge loop. And extrude and uh, honestly we could probably just merge all these at a single point right now so I'm just gonna do that uh, yeah so everything was selected so I just hit M or merge at center nice so now alt Z to get out of this mode and you can see yeah there's there's some triangulation things like maybe this might not be as smooth so if I to see this well I'm gonna go over to solid mode and I'm gonna turn on random and mat cap and now you can see the ge form of the geometry a lot better. And you're like, okay, maybe this triangle, that might be a cause of concern. So maybe I want to GZ to move this up. And, you know, just try generally GZ maybe move this up as well. Just generally trying to smooth things out. Um, but in general, this isn't too bad. If you look at, uh, if you alt click and try to select an edge loop, you can see this this doesn't really you know it doesn't know what to do um this edge is not a very well-defined edge whereas if i do this it's better but it's still not maybe looping around like we would want it to do um so this is this is also topology um is the topology flow is how is your mesh connected to other parts of your mesh um like this this is a you know pretty good obviously it breaks down here but this is a pretty good instance of topology flow 
um, whereas something like here is not uh, flowing as we would like it to do. In our case, it doesn't matter, um, but it can be um, useful when you're modeling to be able to just select an edge loop and it just works. Um, but uh, like I said, we won't worry about it for Mario Kart because most of these are quads and uh, this makes our life for texturing easier and it also makes for text coloring easier uh, and we don't need that extra benefit of having good topology but uh, that is one of the things associated with it. So now we're also going to maybe select this outside loop. Um, can just control clicking around and then uh, top view just so I can see easier and then extrude and I want it to go outwards this time. So I'm going to go this way and yeah maybe that's a maybe that's a good amount and then I you can also instead of just you can just take everything GZ move this up or you can also change the angle at which at which it's going at right now it's already set at an angle which is from last time I did this action and uh, okay maybe that's a bit too extreme uh, but that can be that can be useful so I we have now created off-road inside and outside maybe now we want to uh, work on the wall for this. So we're going to select this object, right? Uh, and then tab into edit mode. And then uh, I, we can maybe select... Oops. Uh, if you control click uh, to pick shortest path like I tried to do here, obviously it took the, the shortest path, but that wasn't the one that I wanted. I wanted to go around here. Um, So if you press and hold on here, you can, uh, yeah, bring up. But we're going to click on here and actually T to collapse that panel. And then we want to um, select around here, control click and control click. So the, the thing that we want to do here is instead of uh, having off-road go out from it, which, you know, is control E, we want... Uh, we want our wall to go down uh, because we want to actually preserve this uh, being able to cut around here. Um, actually, I need to pull this up again. I'd like to be able to cut around here just just a bit and to be able to cut, cut inside here um, without off-road in the way and having to hop over that or go wide to avoid the off-road. I like to be able to just cut through it a bit um, with that ear time. So the way you way we do that, and the also the easiest way to make off-road stuff and whatever in Blender is just easy extrude on the z-axis down, uh, and there you go. This is this is now your wall. <coughs> but I you can definitely do this. I let's say you don't want to do this though. I or you do want to do something like this, but you want it to have it be a more natural. So first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna I create this create this ring here uh, yeah so you're able to do all these cuts and whatever and it's nice and so if you fall off you're also not going to be interacting with this geometry very much but we're also now going to extrude Z and then you can uh, uh, scale it here and obviously uh, just just a very small amount and you can also maybe alt s to scale along normals so maybe we can scale it up uh, scale it out and GZ scale it up easy to extrude down and uh, alt S is to scale it um, along normals you can also go up here and click normals and so that might uh, might be what you want um, I'm gonna just extrude globally and then uh, maybe local and then scale X uh, scale Y. Yeah, scale Y. And uh, there we go. Now it's a bit more broken up. You can also definitely go here and uh, turn on proportional editing and then make some adjustments here and just break up this um, these harsh edges. Uh, and you can definitely do this manually.
And uh, we also edge slide GG. Um, I'm gonna edge slide just to, you know, do stuff to my geometry. Uh, sorry, I didn't explain that very well. It was all the way over here. And so the way I did that was just so GG slides it along the edge, which is more in line with what I wanted. Uh, and we're also gonna take this over here. You can even go to top view um, and bring it out here. So now we actually have um, some some actual stuff happening. Nice. Uh, yeah. So that is easy way to create cliff, cliff face or what have you is you know just extrude it up, create some segments. You can also uh, one thing you can do is you can uh, create uh, if you extrude this down. And then you can also control R to add loop cuts, scroll up to add a bunch, and then you have your geometry here, and then you can modify these points, um, and maybe control R here to add more points, and what have you. So that's an, also another way to do things. Um, let's see, so maybe let's do some texturing right now, uh, because I like to switch between texturing and modeling. Uh, and uh, one thing uh, that you'll notice when we're, um, well, obviously when we've created this, now we have some weird UV stuff that's expected. But one thing also, when we're editing this, this geometry here, um, if we go into random and I, I rotate it here, I'm like, oh, maybe I think this will, uh, let me change it back to global. Uh, maybe I think that this will be a better like geometry, right? Uh, in this case, it's not at all. We want like lines going straight across our mesh. Um, but the point still stands of if I rotate it here and then I go back to texture mode, I can see, oh, I've now, I've now rotated this. Whereas before it's, you know, nice and not stretched. So, uh, just being, being aware of that, um, this is why you generally model everything first, apply some very basic textures, and then, you know, test track. Uh, well, a lot of test tracks, um, just to make sure that, you know, you, you don't do a bunch of texturing and modeling and then finding out that actually it sucks and I have to redo this section. You know, the, the texturing is just an additional layer of, additional layer of pain. So uh, we're gonna attach some mud to this. So I'm gonna select this whole edge loop. You can also just alt click to select the whole edge loop. I, I did it the old fashioned way because, uh, because reasons. Oh, this is just control clicking, pick shortest path. So now what I wanna do is I want to UU applies a default UV unwrap. You can also UV to project from view and top view. Um, and then we can create a new uh, material. We can, uh, I, call it mud and I can go image color or image texture and find the mud texture that I want and I'm gonna pick this one for the outside assign and I'm gonna go to my UV editing tab Q to zoom on the object and A to select everything here and scale it up nice um, yeah now we that's how you create mud so now I want to select all these interfaces and I can press C to bring up circle select. Middle mouse uh, holding that is to deselect stuff. I can scroll in or scroll up and scroll down to increase my radius. And to get out of this mode, I right click. Um, uh, sorry, I'm like totally blinking. Uh, yeah, so now we just selected all of those and let's give them a new mud um, and the reason why I have .001, is I've done this before and it remembers the materials that I have, but, um, anyways. So I want this mud, omit image, and now I want to assign it to these faces. So this is the selection that I just made and I can assign it here. And I also need to give them default UVs, so you. I uh, project from view, which is V, uh, UV is pr to project from view. 
scaled up, maybe art R to rotate, and now I have something that looks like that. The nice thing about this texture is that it blends with the, this road texture better um, compared to compared to this one. But uh, that is neither here nor there. I mean, it is here, here or there. But uh, cool. So now we want to add a fence. Maybe that's the next thing we want to do. And we're going to say, well, I think that uh, if I um, alt click along here, I can see I selected this edge loop. Like that's that's close to the fence that we want, but it's not quite it, right? <coughs> Maybe I want players to be able to cut off a bit more with their with their shrooms. So let's try this edge loop, and uh, shift alt click to select more than more than one edge loop. And I say maybe this is the maybe this is the um, fence that I want, but you're like, well, that's that's not exactly it. So the, there's two other solutions. One is to do a knife tool, and this is very much like I know exactly where my where my fence is gonna go. Um, I'm gonna yeah, you're just cutting into the mesh, and then you're gonna take this line, and you're gonna extrude it up. When you're done with the knife tool, you press enter. Um, and so one thing you could do is something like that, and then you take this outer edge loop that we just cut out, and uh, and then you can extrude it up, right? That's definitely one thing you can do. Uh, in our case, I don't want to do that. I'm going to try to get away with doing a loop cut, because I want somewhere between these. So that looks fine. Uh, and then I'm going to go into here, and you can see uh, it's it's not quite not quite doing what we want. So uh, I think this is this is more or less where I, where I want to put it. Uh, maybe farther back out, and I can Control R to add a loop cut here. And I actually let me go back into MatCap random to see this geometry lines, and then I can use the knife tool to cut into the mesh here and uh, get, get something that I that I want. Um, so it's going to go around here, it's going to go around here, and let's see, I cannot control R to add loop cut as it's not going to nicely connect up. So I'm going to manually uh, go back to top view um, and I'm going to use K to bring up the knife tool and uh, just cut out the, the part that I want. And uh, if you press shift, it will go to the middle of, or control, it will or shift, uh, yeah, shift, and it will snap to the middle of faces. Um, and you press shift again to toggle it off. And uh, something like this. And enter to confirm. So now I have, uh, yeah, now I have this fence uh, cut into the geometry. The ground geometry. I'm just going to select all these, and then what I can do is I can easy to extrude it up on the z-axis, and something like that's fine. You can also even uh, well turn off proportional editing with O. You can also bring it down, uh, you know, just GZ here, um, and then have it really high uh, walls in the uh, KCL your collision. But uh, I don't want that, and this is this is fine. So uh, now for texturing this, I uh, go back to flat and texture. I'm going to first UV unwrap this. UU is to give a basic UV uh, thing to it. And then I'm going to uh, create a new material, call it fence, image color, image texture. And I, I'm going to find this um, fence texture. And I'm going to assign it to this plane. So if we look at the UV editing tab, Q to zoom in, right? I and I GX, you know, with everything selected, you can see this is what it looks like. Actually, we want to rotate it by 90 degrees. We don't want our fences going sideways. So I rotate by 90 degrees, and then if I move it on the Y direction, I can see this is what it looks like, right? So we want to scale everything up on the Y direction until it encompasses the bottom and top. And I now it seems to be squished on the x direction, so we can scale it up on the x direction as well. And maybe let's uh, 
GX so that this is near the very, you know, move it so that this is near the very end. So now I want everything to basically have this UV. So I'm going to go to the very end. I'm going to control click, control click, and uh, that didn't work. But I uh, control click to pick source path, and then ending up at the um, plane that we've already, you know, correctly UV mapped. And now we just want everything to follow from this UV map. So U and I can follow active quads. So all of these are quads, so they're now going to have the same UVs as this. You can see this is what it looks like. And if we assign them all here, it's going to look awful because as you can see, these are actually really squished together compared to what this is. I'm not surprised that this happened. Um, didn't happen all the other time. Um, but one thing you can also do is, uh, I mean, you can also manually take these and scale it on the X direction and then a GX and then you have something that looks like this and that might be that might be good enough I uh, you notice there's a bit of uh, stretching there um, so maybe you can take all of this and you can UU to this is to um, yeah, if you scale everything up you can see everything is going across this way and we want to rotate it by 90 degrees and if you scale it up on the Y I scale on the X you can see if we take I uh, it's close I mean we need to rotate by 180 degrees um, it's close but it's not it's not quite but one thing we can do is we can take all of these um, tops of things not not including this because this is the bottom thing and scale Y zero and then we move it up here and then we take everything on the bottom and we can scale Y zero and move it here, you can see now that, well, we need to rotate everything by 180 degrees. Uh, you can see that we have, uh, yeah, we've we've done what we wanted to do. Uh, one additional thing that you might need to do, I, I have UV squares right here, which I think I had you all install, but I, to grid by shape, can also, um, and then scale X and now these have a more uniform uh, shape throughout and that might be that might be what you want I <coughs> excuse me uh, two grid by shape basically scales everything on the this you know top uh, scales on the y by zero scales on the y by zero but then it also sometimes you have slants here where this is broad long here and this is broad long here and then a you can either go manually scale x zero and select this one, scale x0, select this one, scale x0. Uh, but you can also just do two grid by shape, and that should do it. So now we have, um, uh, huh, looks like this didn't, this didn't work out so well. So I'm just going to select this, Q to zoom in, and that looks, that looks correct now. Um, you'll notice also that um, at, at the ends of this, there's a very small, um, yeah, there's, there's a very small uh, line up here. That is the bottom of the texture. So let me, uh, oops. I, if I select this whole edge loop, that is the, um, interesting, this isn't connected to other things. Anyways, I, that is the top of this texture, or the, the bottom, the top of this texture is is actually above this line here. So it's wrapping around and then it's grabbing the stuff on bottom here. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to GY and move it. So it's no longer reading that. We also maybe want uh, this bottom to be, you know, to have more of this, of this structure at bottom. And so now there's more, you know, if I bring it up here, there's less at the, less at the bottom. So that is, that is the fence. Now maybe the next thing we want to do is I uh, add the graveyard. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, add a plane. Uh, I shift right click to move this 3D cursor around. Add a mesh, scale it up, RX 90, rotate it on the X by 90 degrees. And then I can GZ, move it up, and maybe scale XX, scale on the local X axis. And then I want to uh, give it a grave texture base color image open and here's a here's a grave that i have nice um 
And we can just duplicate this around now. So shift D, R, shift D, R, shift D, R, shift D, R, shift D, R. And you notice I don't have to do RZ because I'm just going from top view. So any rotation will just be on the Z axis anyways. But now you'll notice, oh hey, I can't see some of these. Uh, that's because, yeah, we just duplicated that without any regard for the underlying terrain. Um, so we're just going to manually select select everything here and uh, just move it up. Cool. Um, yeah. And honestly, having some of these buried might not be a... <coughs> excuse me. Uh, might not be such a horrible idea. But uh, one thing that you're going to note is that um, the backs of these faces, so when we talked about normals uh, previously, these are, planes are also going to have normals. So when we actually create the mesh, same thing with this, we want to be able to see both sides. So we're going to end up culling these um, coal nut, uh, you know, cutting out none of the none of the backside of the geometry, so that looks good. And now we can also um, shift D, R, and uh, let's give this a new material. Go here, add a new material slot, maybe call it Grave 2, add an image texture, open, and let's add this one, maybe, and delete this first one, or remove this first one, and we can now duplicate this one around. And the same thing, we're going to have to end up, um, yeah, moving it on the on the axis, the z-axis. So that's maybe good. And actually, I, I kind of like that. Uh, it's sinking in, and that's good. And this one, let's make sure it's not floating. Same with this one here. Cool. Um, now we're also going to add some scale. So we're going to scale this down. That's just S to scale. We're going to bring this up. We're going to sync it down more. Uh, some of these people had uh, more money, and some of them were poorer. This sucks to suck. I'm going to maybe add some. Uh, what's it called? Tilt, so that they're not all on exactly straight up after time. Um, and uh, yeah, let's scale some of this down. Just all this randomness adds so much character to the, adds much more life, adds much more realism, believability to your to your world. Um, is just having that uh, randomness throughout because nature is is inherently random. Um, it's why also I need to. Um, maybe edit the scale of this some more. Like we can see it's slightly, you know, when I when I was editing the shape, this was slightly smaller and this was slightly larger, but maybe it's still pretty uniform. So it's all about breaking up that uniformity. Here it's telling a different story. Um, here it is more that mat natural man-made, so we, you know, do expect to see more rigid stuff. But for organic stuff, or like trees, you expect to see a lot more um, fluidity. So I'm going to add a tree now, speaking of trees. So RX90, uh, scale Z primarily, but then scale out as well. And maybe that will do. Uh, maybe that, scale Z. And then we'll add our new texture, call it tree. Image texture. And uh, let's find our tree. And here's our, here's our tree, nice. Uh, the one thing, that we normally do with trees, I uh, or in trees, bushes, whatever, I uh, these graves almost, but they they don't quite work with this. We shift D to duplicate, and then R Z ninety, and so you can see these don't quite line up here, right? But we can uh, move them so that they do line up here, or close to close to lining up, and this way, I uh, yeah, you do you do get this three D shape out of these two 2D textures. And it, it does work, uh, surprisingly. One thing that I've noticed is that we're still getting this clipping, so I'm just gonna move these along the Y and shift to make that 
I'm less dramatic, and uh, take V's and GY. And we still actually have this, so I'm going to move it down even more. All right, now we don't have textures at the top. Um, we looks like we do have this random floating texture here on the side, so we need to, uh, it looks like it's on this end that it's happening on, so we can just zoom in here and then bring it back, and now we don't have that that texture artifact anymore, and same thing over here. Um, we'll select this, this part, and then we'll just move it back so we don't get that anymore. Cool, um, so now we have this tree and we can uh, duplicate it. This is, you know, you made the asset, now you can duplicate it. And uh, actually let's, let's move it, you know, scale it down a lot and move it here. And uh, let's duplicate it up here, rotate it there and um, move it out of the grave. But actually I kind of like this, this aesthetic of you know, just having a bush in the ground, not necessarily a tree anymore, but some sort of stick structure poking out of the ground there. <coughs> That's kind of cool. So I'm going to keep that, and you notice they look very different uh, in terms of different, you know, character and what have you. Uh, so yeah. Right, now we're going to add one more bit of decoration in the graveyard here, and shift right click. And then we're going to shift A to add a plane, scale it up, RX 90, and uh, scale Z, GZ. And I also want to scale it actually back down. And we're going to call this our lamp. Lamp. All right, thank you. I don't need to see the preview right now. Um, image texture. And we have this cool, this cool lamp. So, uh, yeah, let's scale it up as well. So this looks maybe the size that we want. Um, notice that it's a lot bigger than this tree. Um, you just have to make sure that you're doing the scale you want. And we'll do our trick of uh, Shift D to duplicate the object and then rotate it on the Z axis by 90 degrees and just look how nice and 3D this looks. Obviously there's, there's a bit, you know, this where it's going, going through here. But I, I don't think people are going to notice it, and uh, it looks good. So uh, now that we also have this object, we also have to duplicate it because we worked so hard in getting it to exist. So we're just going to duplicate the same thing over and over. Uh, I'm going to put these at like the edges of this graves graveyard. Uh, so it's like these beacons that, not beacons. Uh, what do I want to say? I don't know, they're, they're like a cornerstone of, yes, here's where the edge is. Yes, here's where the edge is. Um, and it looks, I don't know, I, I like the aesthetic of it. Uh, and maybe we'll also add one over here. Shift D to duplicate R, and you can also scale these, scale these up or down, depending on how you like it. So um, this is our graveyard all complete. So the next thing, or the last thing that we'll do uh, is we're going to add a, um, a rock art. Uh, so we're going to use sculpting here, and I uh, the uh, thing about sculpting in Blender is that you always have to have a good base mesh. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add. This is maybe a more advanced type thing. So I'm going to add a um, single vertice, um, and this is um, you can also uh, if you don't want to do that you can also or don't have that add-on enabled I can't tell you which one it is add a plane and merge at center and now we have a single vertex um, except um, it seems to not like that I sorry let me let me keep this accessible uh, this is this single vertex is behind one of the bajillion add-ons that I have but I don't remember the name of so let's just add a cube for simplicity okay um, and uh, let's move this cube here and s scale it up. This is roughly the size that we want. And we're, it's roughly going to go from here. So the, the reason why I'm adding this cube is so that I'm going to keep this, um, this cliff face as innocuous as possible, make it not prominent. Um, I want this, you know, I want this rock to take up more of your visual space on your screen. Um, so I'm going to scale up on the z-axis 
And then uh, in edit mode, I, I can also extrude in the z-axis, um, extrude out here, I loop cut, control R, and then uh, extrude down here. And now you notice this is this is very close to the road. So let me just grab this all up, move it here, and uh, wow, really? So I extrude this down. Oh, I was in like vertex mode or whatever. Um, so let me actually just delete this face and uh, just take this whole face and move it down. That should yield better results when we're sculpting. So um, yeah, let's now let's now do some sculpting. So we go over to the sculpting uh, workspace area, and we've uh, selected this object. Now I I need to is it F? No, it's not F. Um, sorry, I you should have strength set at fifty by default, and radius maybe also at fifty or strength at point five. And I uh, if you just if you do anything like nothing's happening, uh, and you're pretty much correct. You need to turn on dynamic topology. Uh, and like, dynamic topology will not prefer vertex colors. UVs are all the custom data. Like uh, when we're editing our mesh, like our UVs are going to be destroyed. Any all and you know. Anyways, so this is something you do beforehand, and now you're actually drawing on. It's actually creating geometry for you, which is nice <coughs> because we actually want to you know not just move vertices around, but we actually want to create vertices. And this is going to get really, uh, like, a lot of vertices are going to be made. Um, just, just letting you know that. Uh, and then we're going to decimate it back down. So we have the default draw. Um, you can increase the strength. You can also increase the radius. So now we're we're drawing this, and you know a lot more crazy stuff happens, um, which is maybe not what we want. You can also subtract from stuff. So now we're, you know, cutting out this corner and uh, cutting a ridge through it. Um, and uh, so this is the main tool that we're going to use. We can also use um, inflate and that inflates an area. It's not uh, drawing per se, but it's inflating, uh, which is the best explanation I can give you. There's also uh, smoothing and flattening. I don't know the difference between the two. Um, but uh, yeah, those those also exist. So maybe let's just start. Uh, let's start drawing an area. So the first thing maybe we want to do, we want to create this, uh, you know, and get this less less square looking. So we want a big radius for this uh, because we're going to do some large operations on our mesh, and we're just maybe going to create this art shape. So we're going to um, add some geometry up here, and. Uh, yeah, maybe we also want to add some more geometry back here. So, um, yeah, so, and then we can also subtract geometry away from here. And I'm just really eyeballing it. I'm not a good sculptor, um, but you just a lot of times just wing it. Uh, and then uh, the decimate modifier will take a care of a lot of, a lot of stuff for you. So let's round up this edge, um, and let's uh, add a large amount of distortion back here. So you can see if I'm going for the bottom, it's also incrementally taking the stuff you can't see above it and moving around. Uh, so that's why it's also um, it's easy to work from the bottom, uh, because then the you know, you, you're not concerned at what it looks like at bottom because it's going to be covered up by whatever, but then the top you get a more realistic shape. Um, and so I'm going to smooth out this curve here um, because this harsh edge is not is not doing it for me. Um, and uh, you notice so I have some maybe weird geometry right here where it's, you know, there's a really convex concave section here so I can just inflate uh, and then you know I do this and then you can see this crease is starting to fade away um, so that's that's what inflate can do so that's nice um, and uh, this 
uh, right now it looks still really square so I'm gonna uh, maybe grab is is grab a thing there's <laughs> there's sneak hook let's see can I just yeah I'm gra grabbing stuff and moving it up so now if I take all this and just grab it up ah, not quite doing what I wanted to do uh, okay so um, yeah one thing I'm gonna do I'm gonna go into edit mode and I'm going to just select a few faces and I'm just gonna uh, turn on proportional editing and GZ and there we go now this looks more like we want to do you can see when we've gone into edit mode you can see all of these different small faces that we've added this is way too many polygons unsurprisingly for Mario Kart Wii but we will we'll fix that we also have you know some just creating some shapes overall here maybe moving it out here and uh, rotating it along here and just tr generally trying to move this around so a mixture of sculpting proportional editing or if you if you're good enough you just do um, sculpting but I'm not good enough so I must I must cheat so maybe something like this shape is looks good uh, I have no idea but what I'm gonna do if you go back to sculpting tab back into sculpt mode you can see our dynamic topology was turned off so we have to turn it back on and then one thing we can do is we can go to our smooth tool and just maybe smooth out some of this some of this madness so it's not trying to create you know keep as many of these local you know local oddities and we just want to keep this overall overall shape um so yeah this is this is your advanced advanced lesson on um, sculpting and this obviously looks awful but uh, it doesn't matter because what we're going to do is we're just going to go into our modifiers panel add a modifier add the decimate modifier uh, you can also do a limit to dissolve but I don't I have never used that so I'm going to decimate it and you can see before the if I keep this ratio at 1 I can see my face count is 43,000. If I turn it down to 0.2, I'm now down to 8,000, which is still horrendously way too many. Um, like the max Mario Kart Retris is 25k. Um, and I can also uh, shift D to duplicate, and it keeps the same ratio. Or you can go down here um, or add modifier. Um, and then I do want to, it's still too high poly for me, so I'm going to add another um, thing. And we're down to 3,500 faces, which, yeah, it's keeping the shape. You know, like this is, all of this extraneous detail doesn't really matter. It gets smoothened out in the decimate anyways, but we still keep some of the jagged edges. Um, and that looks, that looks good. So I can either control A or I can just apply, apply, apply. Um, yeah. Uh, so in the same way you can make uh, road with subdiv surface so actually I can add a subdiv surface here and then you can you can see it automatically got smoother right uh, it's adding an extra le level of geometry whereas if I remove that I I don't have that and I can decimate more if I wanted to so uh, yeah that's that's a modifier that is quite powerful uh, and now I want to texture this so I can just in this object you know this is its own object Q to zoom in um, I can add a rock material and image texture and I find this rock and I uh, this default UV is no good if you look over here and you change it to rock um, if you select a to select everything uh, I don't even know where they where they are on here. Yeah, they, there might not even be a default UV um, applied. So I uh, if I try to do the default unwrap, uh, I it, it fails as you can see failed to solve. Uh, it doesn't know where the edge seams are or what to do. So you can uh, do UC, which is a cube project, and uh, this this might work. Uh, you notice in our case it doesn't quite do it. You can also try to do a smart UV project and change around some of the settings there. Um, you can see over here this is what it tries to do is it tries to find those edge seams and create, you know, 
create it, but if we just scale it out, um, we'll get something like that. And that looks rocky enough for me. Um, yeah, I, the, a lot of these like rock textures, a lot of these seams are really hard to see um, that they do exist. Um, and Cube Project did a pretty good job. Like, there's still a seam here, but Cube Project does a pretty good job at, uh, yeah, doing what you want. So now we've, I, uh, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, we have created our graveyard. We have touched upon sculpt mode. We've looked at how do we, um, you know, create rock wall, which is something you're gonna have to do a bunch of times. The most important thing is this off road, which is Control E. Um, to extrude the edges and then I'm gonna come back next time I once I know what my vision for this track is uh, I'm gonna add a waterfall I know that much and uh, water at the bottom but I uh, will go from there all right I will see you in the next one